All right, what's going on, guys? This is episode uh, 25 of Dispersing the Cloud. We just tried to do the episode, but the internet shut down. We're going to try it again. Um, I'm at my buddy Chad Soderfield's childhood home. I'm here uh, house-sitting while uh, he is in some exotic land, and his parents, uh, are, I believe, are also in some exotic land. So I broke in. I'm eating his food. Deal with it. <laughs> um, re recap of my week uh, I know I'm late on this video the last couple of videos I've been really late I'm trying to get better at it I need to get back on track but I was in Santa Monica in Southern California helping some friends out with two different wedding projects uh, one of my friends is a, a sign maker and uh, she had some signs to make down in Santa Monica so we did some scouting really cool wedding location down there plus anytime I get to be uh, out on the pier and next to uh Next to the ocean, I'm a pretty happy camper. Um, went to wrestling practice that week with Cal Baptist and got to hang out and um, help out with their wrestling camp. Put the kids through a warm up, broke my foot. And uh, so now I have a broken foot and I've been using some crutches to get around. So that kind of sucks. But it was great to see everybody over at Cal Bat and, uh, and do some wrestling with them. Uh, and then I had a wedding that weekend. My buddy David Razo, his brother Josh, got married. And uh, they had a beautiful wedding. I got to sing at it. Uh, I was pleased to be there. So glad that they had me. I love the Razo family completely. David is one of my uh, one of my blood brothers. He is one of the hardest working people I know, and I get a lot of my motivation and my drive from him. So it was great to meet up with them, chat, hang out. My process for the week was resistance is key. Uh, this last two or three weeks has been chaos. A couple car accidents since I got back from Missouri, uh, now the broken foot, we had a couple projects, um, have some hiccups, and um, some payments didn't go through from some uh, production projects that I had, they didn't pay me on time, so I was struggling for cash. Um, but resistance is key, I used to have an entrepreneurship teacher who would say, uh, when you reach a barrier, that's a good sign because there's a certain percentage of people who won't go past that barrier. So every time you hit a roadblock, just celebrate because you know that you have the tenacity to go past it. And once you're past it, that's another percentage of people who will no longer compete with you because they won't take the time to go past it. So I love adversity. Resistance is key for success. That was my process for this week. Um, the book that I read was Smarter, Faster, Better by Charles Duhigg, all about how to be more productive in your life. Uh, for me, this is going to be huge um, going over it, some of the tips that I picked up, some stuff I already knew, some stuff I didn't, uh, but it started out with start with why, right? Uh, Simon Sinek, start with why. Uh, it's, I mean, it, it's the same common theme that keeps coming up in all these books that I'm reading, and so it's no surprise that uh, the start of this book said, you have to know your purpose before you do anything. If you don't know your purpose, it's going to drive all your decisions and um, you're not going to be able to be successful or productive if you don't know your purpose or why you're doing something. Um, this was really cool. Inter internal locus of control. There's two types of people. There's a type of person who believes that they have control over their environment and there's a type of person who believes that their environment controls them. An internal locus of control is someone who believes that they control their environment. Now, we're kind of taught to believe that this is something that's just, that's just the way that you think. It's actually a learned skill. You can learn to believe that you control your environment. Um, it's something that's kind of been ingrained in me since I was young, so I didn't. I don't have to learn very much. But if you're sitting there and you're like, ah, I, I don't believe that, it's definitely a learned skill. You can work on it and get better at it. But the most productive people in the world, they have a great internal locus of control and they believe that they have uh, the ability to affect their environment. This was super interesting. Make mental models for yourself. So there is a type of person who talks to themselves a lot. Like let's say uh, I'm going to go ask my boss for a raise. I'm literally going to have that conversation in my head like 10, 12 times before I go ask him. It's one of those things where I'm having the conversation while I'm driving down the road. What's he going to say? What am I going to say? I literally play it out in my head constantly. And I always thought I was just a weirdo. Um, but actually this is something that some of the most successful people and the most productive people do in their life. They're creating mental models for themselves. 
there's a, a really cool story, um, and I'll touch on it real quick, and then I'll jump back to it later on about a plane crash. And um, so one a flight went down from, I think it was from England to America. A flight went down, and um, it could have been avoided. When they got the black box, they found out that all the different instruments in the plane were telling the pilots to do one thing, right? And because the pilots hadn't created a map for themselves of how to address those problems, they missed the signs right in front of them. Literally, the plane was saying, pull up, because they, they were descending. But they were in a stall, and they were in a stall because their nose was up. So their nose is like this, and they're falling, and the plane's saying, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. So the co-pilot is pulling up, pulling up, pulling up as they fall down. And all he had to do was tilt the nose down, gain some speed and lift, and they would have been fine. They fell for like three minutes. And literally at the very end, um, they could finally see the ocean right before they hit. And this is all being recorded by the black box. The co-pilot said, this can't be right. So what's happening? He still was looking with his own eyes, seeing the ocean coming at him, but asked the other three people right before he died, so what's happening? Like, that blew my mind. He didn't have mental maps. He hadn't gone over all these scenarios in his head of what his reactions would be. Um, they compared it to a similar crash where literally it was like the worst case scenario and the pilot... Uh, the pilot did a great job of stopping people in mid, right before they, they do something. He said, wait, no, stop. Think about this. If we do this, that won't work because this is happening. I think the fuel, the fuel was all in one wing of the plane because this wing got ripped off and they were, they were lopsided a little bit and the, uh, the plane was unbalanced. So the computer was telling them to transfer fuel from the good other wing over to this wing to balance the plane out. So the guy went to do it and the pilot's like, hold on. Don't do that. There's no, there's no wing over there. He's operating off his mental maps while the other person's just reacting to his environment. He has no mental maps. Uh, I thought that was really encouraging for me. I know I'm not crazy now, and um, mental maps are a good thing. Uh, smart goals and stretch goals. Smart goals are something that are very easy to achieve. You can do them. They're fun to mark off. You know, it's great to mark stuff off your to-do list. But um, I already sent the three emails I have to send today. So if I put send three emails and cross it off, now I'm just wasting time, right? That's a really smart goal, but I'm wasting time. Um, they discovered that you need stretch goals. You need goals that are impossible. Um, and that gets you outside of your comfort zone and your box. And it helps you learn how to think outside the box. Rich Dad, Poor Dad says this all the time. You want to put yourself or put your brain in the situation of thinking. If the goal is too simple, you stop thinking. Um, and so I made some more stretch goals for myself. Um, a couple are uh, starting another company. Right now I have three, and I'd like to have four by the end of 2018. So um, I, I know it seems insane to even do that because I'm already like overworked and just doing taxes is ridiculous, but it's causing me to think of solutions for the other businesses to run better. That way I can start another one. Uh, so stretch goals are great. And this was the story that they brought up for it. So they had a, a group of runners and they told them that they had 60 seconds to run 200 meters. Anyone who's ever ran for track, you know, that's impossible. No human could ever do that. But they said, just give a full out sprint, right? Until you reach where however far you can, but you're trying to get 200 meters. So they timed them, 60 seconds passed, and they got X amount of distance. I think they got like, uh, we'll say they got a 120 yards, like whatever. Um, we'll call it, we'll call it 120 yards. It's not the numbers. Then they tell them to run 100 meters, and they still have 60 seconds to do it. They actually got seven or eight yards further than they did with the 200 yards. The reason they did is because they had a mental map of what it looked like to run 100 meters in 60 seconds because that's almost doable, right? It might be doable. I'm giving you wrong numbers, but you understand the concept. Um, when you have a mental map of something, 
you go further with the same task. So both times they had 60 seconds. So that was pretty interesting. Um, information blinds. Um, and this is, this is something a little bit different because you know I'm intaking a lot of information. And sometimes it's so much information that I'm blinded by all of it and I don't see the stuff that I need to see. That's really what happened in that plane crash. There's so much information coming in that you're blinded by the actual situation. You're descending, your nose is tilted up, you're falling, and there's so much information coming around, the computer tells you to pull up and you're just making it worse, right? Um, so information blindness is like snow blindness. Sometimes we have to slow down and actually take a breath, use the mental maps that we have, if we've created them, and see what the actual problem is and then address that problem. Method is sometimes best understood through osmosis. Um, for me, I have to do things to learn things. I can't just be told the method. I have to write out the method, right? I have to write it out, I have to touch it, I have to feel it. So they did a, a study on people taking notes in class and if you've been to college or grad school, you understand this concept. When you take notes with your keyboard, you don't retain as much as when you write it out longhand. And they did a bunch of studies on this. It's because method, right, sometimes is best understood by osmosis. Um, and it's engaging with information. This is the last thing I got from the book, was engage with information. It was really encouraging to hear that when you read a book, the first suggestion is for you to go talk with your friends about the book, which is, i.e., exactly what I'm doing. I read a book or two a week, and then I sit down in front of a computer, and I have my notes, and I go over all my notes with you guys, and it helps me retain the information. You're actually, the study showed that you're actually accessing the learning folder in your brain, and that's how you're retaining it. You're engaging with the information. So this whole project, Dispersing the Cloud, was created so I could think better, I could grow, I could be quicker on my feet and I'm dispersing this cloud of gray over my brain that's keeping me from like growing like I was when I was getting my graduate degree and it just is reinforced. Every time I read a book, it's just reinforcing the good habits that I'm creating for myself. Um, so this book again, uh, Faster, I'm sorry, Smarter, Faster, Better by Charles Duhigg. Amazing book. It was not filled with as much things, as many tools as I thought. Um, for me being productive, it was more explaining why people are productive and a good marker for me to know that I'm doing a lot of the, the things that I should be doing. Um, I maybe picked up one or two things from this that I'm going to definitely use. Uh, the stretch goals is what I picked up and um, engaging with information, taking handwritten notes. Maybe Twitter is not the best way to take notes. Um, I'm still going to be doing the Twitter because I know some people do follow that. Uh, my next book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I've already read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but I do not believe that I've done a video on it. I haven't read it this year. I read it last year. I want to reread it. The reason I want to reread it is because um, a lot of these books have mentioned how important it is to reread some of the books that have done some big influencing on you. So um, during this next week, I'm reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad and Richest Man in Babylon, um, reactivating my brain on finance. It's been a while since I've done a finance book. I've done a lot of business building books, but not strictly finance on how to grow wealth. And so I'm redoing those two books. If you haven't read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I can already tell you it's, it's one of my must reads. Every person in America needs to read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, as well as Richest Man in Babylon. And so I'm going to go over those two the next week. Um, I won't touch on Richest Man in Babylon uh, very much because there's already a video of my review of Richest Man in Babylon and five stars. Um, so Rich Dad Poor Dad will be next week. Coming up next week for me, I have a meeting with a potential partner for that fourth business that I told you about. Um, I got a meeting with Daniel Rios to talk about um, my learning activities with my book reads. I have an audition I have a learning lesson development meeting with my partner, um, Elizabeth Shar for our production, I'm sorry, for our publishing company that's kind of in its foundational 
um, stages right now. Uh, I have a poker deal with my buddy Casey. I'm gonna catch up with him. And then I got another wedding with uh, Her Something Blue on that weekend. So another big week. Word of inspiration for you guys. Again, thanks for watching. Um, and then someone commented. Lance Kaufman, thanks for uh, commenting, man. I appreciate you watching. And uh, this is your word of inspiration. It is just as important to engage with information as it is to read the information in the first place. All right, so that's what we figured out this week. Um, Bryden, what's going on? I haven't even told people about the project we got going on, Bryden. I'm going to hold off. We're going to talk about that next week. So a lot of good stuff coming. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you soon.